What's up, blockheads? Last video of my Lowrider S. Figured should probably do like a kind of an overview video of everything that I did to the bike and uh, thought that that would be kind of cool to have. Do need to make a video talking about this bike, the new 2019 FXDR that you guys all knew I was going to buy. It's funny, man. I know with my Lowrider S, whenever I first got it, hell, even before I got it, I was already ordering parts for it because like I knew I was going to get it. With this bike, I haven't even looked at aftermarket parts yet because I've just been so stupid busy. Like I have to get a parts list for, you know, my Sportster and then like Orlando Harley wants me to build a bike with them as well. And then we're freaking looking into parts for Miss Blockhead's new soft tail Lowrider. So it's like one thing after the next i don't even have <laughs> time for like my own bike but we'll get there just gotta be patient i need to clone myself i need more of me's dude like all the parking is taken All right, before the lowrider S is gone for good, let's do an overview of it, how it sets. All right, so on this gloomy day, let's do an overview of my 2017 Harley Davidson Dyna Lowrider S, or FX DLS. It's a 2017 Dyna Lowrider S. It has a 110 cubic inch uh, engine in it. I own this bike for about a year. Currently still do own it, but there is somebody coming to purchase it. Before it goes, you know, I did my last ride, said my goodbyes. Uh, I just thought that I would do an overview of all the modifications that I had done to it. Not had done to it because I did them all myself for the most part. I will include all links to everything on the bike down in the description below as well. So if you guys are interested in any of it, be sure to check out the links. You can use them to uh, find the products. On this bike, there is a stage one setup, which is basically a high flow air cleaner. It is tuned and then there's an exhaust. So that's stage one. So the air cleaner is a Roland Sands design turbine air cleaner, which is, I don't know, just I love the look of it. It is the uh, blacked out one. And then the tuner on it is a Vans and Heinz FP3, ran auto tune on for the most part. And then the exhaust is a two to two uh, Bassani radial sweepers uh, exhaust setup. I know I'm probably gonna forget this little thing right here, but this is a digital oil dipstick. Basically it tells you the, the oil temperature and the oil level. So it's saying it's cold. Now everybody asked me about this seat. This is a Roland Sands Design Boss 2-Up seat. I had a uh, solo seat for a while, which didn't have this little back part. They say this is for like a rear passenger. I mean, a passenger could sit on it, but <laughs> that's not much seat space. Absolutely love the seat, and I like the way that it complements kind of like the, the line of the bike. It doesn't have like a straight up and down wall like a lot of those do, like the Dynas. I'm not a fan of those, but it does have some nice support to it, and it's kind of longer, so you can kind of, you know, scoot back or scoot forward. There were some trips, like if my back was hurting or something like that, I would even scoot so far, like on the very back to kind of stretch my legs and stuff. Suspension, um, I did drop it down a little bit to get rid of that fender gap, uh, so stock. It comes with emulsion shocks. I did put some burly slammers on it, so they are uh, like 10 and a half inch burly slammers. It does uh, make the ride a little more rough. If you notice, these are at the highest setting. So uh, if they were all the way down, they would be here. It would drop them about another half inch or so. Whenever I had them bottomed out like that, the ride was really stiff. The ride is still kind of, you know, a little more stiff with these on there versus the stock shocks, but I like the way it made it look. Like I said, getting rid of that fender gap, dropping it down a bit, gives it a nice stance. It's an actually low, low rider versus so many people especially with the Dyna, they basically make it taller so that they can get better lean angle out of it. It does have LEDs all the way around. So we've got Rogue Rider Industries LEDs in the front, LED Daymaker style headlight in the front. We also have this grill, which is kind of bronze it out. And then we have Rogue Rider Industries tail lights as well. Now the cool thing about these uh, lights from Rogue Rider Industries is that you see there's no halo like in custom Dynamics ones. And whenever you do signal, they go amber on, amber on, instead of amber off, amber off, right? So it just adds to the visibility 
and they're really bright and they like I said no halo on either one of those also flush mount gas caps so left and right side that tells you your fuel level and then flush mount cap over here you press in twist left to pop it up and then it just comes up just like that putting it back on tighten it up till it clicks press down over and then that's it, it man it's, it cleans up the look of the tank so much on this side I do have the love jugs uh, which I get so many people that ask me questions about these things they help so much to keep the engine nice and cool put it like this I always use this as an example so last year Biketoberfest over in Daytona going down the strip is probably like maybe a mile long road but it takes probably like an hour whenever it's jam-packed we're going down the strip and it took us an hour right and that's crawling like for a, a bike like this an air-cooled v-twin like your, your bike's gonna overheat. So everybody else was having to shut their bikes off, right? I turned my love jugs on, I didn't have to shut my bike off. It kept it cool. And it keeps it cool enough to where it doesn't actually even go into EITMS mode. If you guys don't know what that is, basically the rear cylinder shuts down so that it helps to cool down the engine. With the love jugs, it keeps it cool enough to where it doesn't even do that. So that's a huge, I think, plus. Uh, definite necessity for these big V-twin engines. I absolutely love them and I would highly recommend them. I also have the uh, Harley Davidson swing arm bag. I looked at a couple other swing arm bags, didn't really like the looks of them. This one's just nice and discreet, you know, and uh, it had some nice storage capacity. It's just for like little stuff. Usually I would just like throw a bag or, you know, something like that in there, throw a sandwich, you know, if I'm carrying my lunch somewhere or something like that. It's just nice to have that little extra, uh, you know, storage if you need it. One cool thing is you don't actually have to use the leather pieces to undo it. It's just like these quick clips. It just looks like there's the leather buckles, so that's kind of cool. I also have the Arlen Ness Brass Fusion Grips, which I liked a lot because it kind of complemented the uh, style of the bike. They feel really nice. They're a little harder, but they feel good with gloves. And, uh, you know, the brass ending on them kind of match that brass bronze kind of look of the wheels. So complimented them really well <laughs> speaking of the wheels did have these little valve caps that are bullet casings just should have swapped those out and kept those but those are pretty cool i also undermounted my mirrors which i did a how-to video on that and the way that i did that and being able to have clearance for the tank was i used these extension brackets i forget what company makes them but i will drop the link like i said in the description down below and that gives you just enough clearance that the mirrors aren't hitting the tank obviously it is a little harder to see them but the reason i did that is just because it lowers the profile of the bike you know it makes it have a cleaner line like that versus you know having like the mirrors and then it coming down and then it going over i also changed out the foot pegs these are trap uh like moto style foot pegs i think they say trap style foot pegs uh these were from dk customs really quality stuff uh definitely planning on getting another pair of those um i like them a lot because they they grip you know they don't just like they're not like the rubber stock ones or whatever where your feet just slide off and then in addition i also got a uh chin spoiler there uh also from dk customs and that was uh basically it just kind of fills in that little gap there adds to the like style the lines of the bike so it's a little something different i think that's it there's a good amount of parts on it you know qual some quality components but uh yeah, nothing, nothing too major, just because I didn't want to get the bike so far away from what it is right now. You know, with being a two-year production bike, that uh, it kind of devalued it. I didn't want to get it so far away from, you know, it being the reason it is a low rider S, because, you know, then it wouldn't be a low rider S anymore. So, but people really love this bike. Harley did a great job, you know, from the factory. And, uh, yeah, I'm sad to see her go, but... You know, it's it's one of those necessary changes for now. Definitely will have a Dyna in the future though. Or one of the new soft tails. I mean, I really like the way they ride. Crank up the bike real quick just so you guys can hear the exhaust. Ah, oh, the exhaust sounds amazing. It's so like deep and throaty. I'm riding a stock FXDR right now, so I miss <laughs> I miss the Harley sound. great oh yeah and then we have a bar bag up here as well which is a uh, like a molly slash velcro bar bag two pouches there's a bunch of goodies in there for the person that buys it and it's just connected to the bars via you know these velcro loops i think that about covers it though she's a great bike i'm going to miss her oh yeah and then i did the plate vertically 
which is totally like a free modification that you can do. Normally this bolt is right here and it sets out this way. So all you have to do is remove that bolt, take this piece of plastic and then mount it on the bottom there through that hole just like that. Super easy mod. All right, well, if you guys have any questions on it, be sure to post them up in the comments down below. That's my 2017 Dyna Lowrider S. She's treated me well. Been great from the get-go. Learned a lot on that bike, for sure. Anyways, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. If you're not subscribed already, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon also, so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity. Till next time, you guys ride safe out there. Stay vigilant. Catch you guys later. Oh yeah, and a blockhead swing arm sticker. Almost forgot about that mod. That's the most important one on there, right? <laughs> All right, catch you guys later. Peace.